whole Africa because I've been a seaman before. And I've gone around the whole Africa. There's no place in Africa that can challenge Ghana. In Ghana here, yeah, we have almost about 15,000 uh, artisanal canoe. We have about 1,500, precisely 1,500 in Azim here. And we have so many types of fishing gears here. We have the DLL, the ring net, hook and line, catch many. We have all those things here. So in Axim here, every type of net, net you can find in Axim here. So Axim, actually to me, is the second highest fishing industry in Ghana. Tuna, swordfish, sharks, well, uh, you know, uh, dolphins and all those things, they are being catched by the DJ. Then the herrings, salmon, this type of fishes is also being caught by the ring net. Then the hook and line, they also get the redfish. Commonly we call it redfish. The redfish, we have also sizes, but they, it is being caught by the hook and line people. Then we have, yeah, the D and DGL, they are those people who go far away, even they go even more than the, uh, where the rig is, where the oil fund is, or the FPSO is now. They go beyond that, you see. Those people who go beyond the uh, FPSO are those people who get the sharks, the swordfish, the tuna, and all those, uh, just a few to mention, you see. So we have so many types of fishing that we have in this community. Any type of fish you want, when you come to our sea, surely you get it. The fishermen are getting poorer and poorer because the amount of money or the quantity of money or fish that before they used to get, these days you are not getting them. And if you are not getting any fish, how can you feed your family or look after your, uh, your, school, uh, your children in their schooling? For the past 10 years, the fishing industry has come down, and especially when the oil funds came in. There are some areas that you are bound not to go there. And if you go near that place, you are forced to lose your necks. Or even you are beaten. Just yesterday, there was one canoe who came down. So who can lie fish, fishes? When they came down, they came and reported to me that they were beaten by the naval personnel at sea. And even one a knife was used to cut the sand. Before, that was where we get our fish. It's a reef fishing ground. And these areas are where these rigs are. We spend a lot of money in getting there. We've got some nerd, this DGNG. They use about almost two drums of petrol to this fishing ground. If they go beyond the rigs, and the way they throw their net, it's a drift net, drift net. So maybe you throw the net even about 1,000 meters away from the rig. But because the, the nets are drifting, it, will may, it may come near the rig. Then instead of them to tell the fishermen to keep away from it or to remove their nets, they will come near you and beat you up. And this has really rendered our fishermen uh, poor because we are not allowed to go to where we are supposed to go. Because 
And I'm going to say, so I crow when you miss your phone. I have because first, I don't know too much about you. 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 Too much There are other methods of um, the fishermen getting poorer due to the method we, the fishermen, use in catching our fish. Because some are using dynamite, cardboard, DDT, um, light for fishing, all these things. I don't know what the light is now. So I learned to not go to no watch now. Yeah, who are? I'm not. Oh, yeah, fine. Oh, yeah, fine. But if you don't make medical, so what are you not? I'm not going to go on. Yeah, fine. And see, I want to. I work at Crown and I want to. Too much on ya. I'm going to say, I'm going to In the 90s, precisely 1996, a fishing vessel called Good Water started this uh, light fishing in Axim waters. I personally reported to the fishing officer, the fish, uh, the fishing department, the officer here. So he called Takari and the boat was arrested. As I'm talking to you, the boat now is in Tamahabo. It has got spot in the 1990s. So we all saw, that was where we saw that eventually, if you don't take care, all these things will crack up. They will come up. So in the year 2000, we saw this light fishing here. But where the government has to come in, it doesn't. Why? Three, because if you do it, we won't vote for you. This is the only thing they say. If you catch us, we won't vote for you. And this has been going on and on and on and on. Being a chief fisherman, here in Axim, for instance, today we are doing light and fishing here. We can tell them and they can stop today. When we tell them, they will, they will stop. But we are in the same Ghana. Whilst other places they are using it, we can't stay and see them using the lack for fishing and we stay there and go hungry. Because they will, they will sail from their area to our waters and cut the fish and go. We see them. We tell, to the, we tell the government, it doesn't do anything. How can I go there and catch them? I can't catch them. At Skendi, they are never based, just there, just near at the port, at the harbor, on uh, the side. And they see them going to sea. But one time, they came down here and catch some of our fishermen for using that time. Not for fishing. Why Skendi, they were using it. So, if the government put his feet down, we will help him. So that uh, some of the illegal fishing, I see. There was even a time all the chief fishermen in Ghana came in together as one, then opposed, then they opposed the use of dynamite, carbon, and we were even made to swear with the sea that we are not going to use carbon than dynamite again. We did that; it worked for us, but unfortunately. We know the politicization of our fishing industry in Ghana. As a result, you see, some government came and said, stop it. Some government also came, go do it. Because if you do it, they will vote for you. If you stop them, they will not vote for you. So that is what has happened to our fishing industry concerning the light fishing. Now, as I'm talking to you now, there are some canoes from Second D who are here doing light fishing. They move from Second D. The naval officers are there. The naval patrol boats are there. They saw them coming. So what do they do? If they don't do anything, what about we? There's, there is nothing that we can, we can do. But with the support of the government, I think we can do further than what we are doing now. So we are appealing to our people. As for our people, we have been talking to them. If the people stop doing it up there, they will also stop. If they don't stop, they will continue doing it. And if they continue to do it, then in future, the, the fishing industry in Ghana will collapse. Our fishers, they will not have future. 
as I'm talking to you. I was sent to Tanzania. And we learned and saw how enforcement was going on on the fishing industry. Because they have patrol boats patrolling their coast. Even from Capri Point to this place, they have two patrol boats. And if you do any illegal fishing, they will catch you. There's no politics in their fishing industry. But here in Ghana, when you catch someone, then another party member will go in and say, oh, this is my nephew, this is my son, and they will release, they will release the person. But if that person goes to prison, I think it will take, uh, it will make sense so that the next person will be afraid to do that. So there should be enforcement. Before, we don't see this kind of weeds along our coast. And these days, we'll be seeing these weeds along our beaches. And a lot more are coming from the deep sea. One professor came down here and told us that it is heat which affects the seabed that accrued this uh, weeds. But we, the fishermen, don't believe him. Don't believe that. We simply believe that it, since the oil came down, this oil fund that has caused this kind of weeds. This is what we believe. 2010, 15 December, that was the very day the oil was commissioned, the, uh, the FPSO was commissioned. You see, so 2011, we started seeing this thing here. So we, the fishermen, we have attributed that uh, uh, risk as a result of the, the oil. I have been working here for the past 20 years. I have not seen this risk since it is only 2011. I got to see this thing on this place. That time, the oil has been started. The drilling has been started. But drilling to we, the fishermen, we know that the drilling, they have wells. They have wells. They have done some wells. So, this, when the operation is in progress, eventually it will bring some wells up. So, we attribute the series as a result of oil. And this often destroy the fishing net. The red net, you have to see the fish before you throw the net. But the deep net, it will only drift. For instance, you throw the net somewhere in um, Eukwe, the following day in the morning, you will be around three points. So as it is drifting, you only catch uh, 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 seaweed. And this has caused problem to the fishermen. Some used to spend four good days removing this wheat from their nets. When the fishermen go to sea, now the DJL, they spend four days because of lack of fish. So they spend four days with ice blocks. They go with ice blocks. They spend four days. When you are lucky to cast your net on a good soil, let me use that soil, a good soil, you are likely to have fish, and at the same time, you will not have that problem of risk getting into your net. But if you are not lucky enough, the very day you cast your net, that very day, it will get into your net. And by getting into your net, it will roll like a rope. When it happens, so there is nothing you can do. You have to come down to the offshore, then ask people to help you to remove them. You see, so. When it is so, you see, look at the expenses you have incurred. When you come down, you use the little energy that you have to reserve it. You see, you have to reserve it for the next fishing day. Then you use that uh, energy to do that job for about three, four days before it will be okay. Now, apart from that, you see, when it comes down, the sun shines on it. The next day, it will die out. So when it dies out, you will see some small, small termites coming out of it. Small, small termites coming out of it. That termite, when you step on it like this, you see the termite 
it's like flies. They won't fly. Then if you don't take care, some will even go into your nose, your mouth. So it is something now we are not experiencing anything like environmental uh, that is heart problem. But we know in future, anything of that sort in future, you will have problem. We've got so many rivers along our Enzima area here. And these uh, rivers, they are all making, uh, digging or, 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 or using it for mining. And there are chemicals inside this waters who goes into the sea killing the fish. This also affects the fish. So the government should be strong and put its feet down so that when this illegal marine industry stops, I think it will, it will help us. Sanitation problem, some are caused by the activities of we the people in Aksum or we the people along the coastal areas. At times, some of them ease themselves along the beaches. We have to remember one thing that the beaches is a tourism area. It's a tourist area where people from outside the country at times they do tour just to see or have some breeze, natural breeze or sea breeze, something like that. So we have to keep that place clean. But some of our people, you see, they just leave their toilets, then come to the beaches, then come and ease their set. When it is raining, they will just throw, they will dump all their refuse in the gutters. Then the gutters will show the water will also clear everything from there, then come and bring, put it into the sea. But one natural thing I want to tell you is that the, the sea doesn't like dirt. So every dirt, every refuse that goes to the sea, finally it will come and land on the shores. So you see the shores, a whole scattered with refuse and all those things. It is the duty, it is the uh, something caused by we, the people, along the coastal areas. So there should be a force, a task force, that when they catch you, either you go to prison or you are fined so that they, they will stop doing that. I think about three years ago, there was this kind of soil they were operating along the beaches. Now, see what has happened. We have stopped. So our beaches have started polluting. You see everywhere, cabbages and uh, these plastic rubbers all over. All these are for the sea because some of these uh, 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 fishes used to swallow these rubbers and they die. And even the fishermen, when they throw their nets, you only find uh, 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 this plastic rubbish. Even at deep sea, when the current changes, you see plastic rubbish at 3,000 meters depth. Every canoe has to be licensed. Uh, but you know, our fishermen, I would say 60% are illiterate. So when you are telling them the right thing, they will just shake their head and say, No. Even people who sell ordinary pure water, they are taxed. But we are not being taxed. So when you say anything about licensing, then they thought they want to tax you. Then from here, they go to every, every coast. Everything. There is paper on everything, even on petrol, on machine, on the crew, on the canoe, everything. You have to get each paper before you are allowed to do your fishing. So I think the licensing is good. They have to license everybody. So that if you are from commander, you come down here and do illegal fishing, they will know your number from the canoe. And we can report to the government. Concerning the boat numbering, it was started some time ago, but it was politicized, so it couldn't go further. Now, now they have started. 
As I'm talking to you, last month the fisheries department came around with a registration of uh, fishing bo uh, boats along the coastal area. So we see it to be a good thing because we have been traveling outside this country. Precisely, we have been going to Ivory Coast for fishing. When there is a lean season, we move to Ivory Coast to do fishing business. But considering the way we do in Ivory Coast, in everything that we do, we have papers covering it. We have insurance, we have licensing of our outboard motor, we have the licensing of our canoe, and even the crew in the boat. So we do license them all. So in case of eventualities, you are being given insurance for the damage caused. Either it is natural or artificial cost to your property. They, they, they give you insurance on that. So we also saw that it is good. It is not everybody, it is we the people from Ghana who goes to Ivory Coast to do fishing business. We do this, the, the same registration. So once we are doing it elsewhere, it is good we bring it here to do it so that it will also in some ways, in some ways, it will also help us. My role is to see that my people live in good life, harmony, with money, so that their business goes on smoothly.